from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back, everyone. It's theCUBE live here in Seattle for day three of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We've been analyzing here on theCUBE for three days, talking to all the experts, uh, the CEOs, CTOs, developers, startups. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, uh, with theCUBE coverage of uh, here at Doc, not DockerCon, CubeCon, and CloudNativeCon. Getting down so to the close, last John. So close, So close. <laughs> a lot of Docker containers around here. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking on the Kubernetes. Our next two guests, we've got a startup, hot startup here. We've got Norman Shea, head of business development from LogDNA, a new compelling solution on Kubernetes, give them a unique advantage. And of course, Daniel Berg, who's the senior engineer at IBM. They have a deal, we're going to talk about the startup and the deal with IBM that highlights kind of the new model, the new, new world's developing. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Um, Thanks for having us. Maybe get you on a DockerCon sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a DockerCon. A container's certainly been great. Talk about your product first. Let's get uh, your company out there. What do you guys do? You're doing something new and different. Yep. Something needed. Yep. What's different about it? Yeah, so you know, when we started building this product, you know, one thing we were trying to do was finding a logging solution that was built for developers, and especially around DevOps. We were running our own multi-tenant SaaS product at the time, and we just couldn't find anything great. We, we tried you know, open source Elastic, uh, and it, was, it turned out to be a lot to manage. There's a lot of configuration we had to do. We tried a bunch of the other products out there which were mostly built for log analysis, so you know, you'd, you'd analyze logs maybe a week or two after, and what, there was nothing just real time that we wanted. And so we decided to build our own. Uh, we overcame a lot of challenges where we, we just felt that we could build something that was easier to use than what was out there today. Our philosophy is for developers in terms of we want to make it as simple as possible. We don't want you to manage or even think about how logs work today. And so the whole idea, even if you go down to some of the integrations that we have, our Kubernetes integration is two lines. Like you essentially hit two kubectl lines, your entire cluster will get logged directly, logged DNA in seconds. That's something we show oftentimes at demos as well. Yeah, Norman, I did wonder if you could drill in a little bit more for us. What yeah. I always look at is a lot of times, you know, the new generation, they've got just new tools to play with and right. new things to do. What was different? What changed it? Is just, you know, the, the composability and like what a small form factor. Yeah. I, I would think that, you know, you could just change order of magnitude in some of the pricing yeah. uh, of some of these, you know, to, to tell us why it's different. Yeah, I mean, I know? think there's, there's uh, Three major things was speed. So what we found was that there, were, there weren't a lot of solutions that were optimized really, really well for finding logs. There were a lot of log solutions out there, but we wanted to optimize that, so we fine tune Elasticsearch. We do a lot of stuff around there to make that experience really pleasurable for our users. The other is scale. So what we're noticing now is if you kind of expand on the world of, you know, back in the day we had single machines that people got logs off of, then you went to VMware where you're taking a single machine and splitting it up to multiple <laughs> different things, and now you have containers, and all of a sudden you have Kubernetes, you have, you're talking about thousands and thousands of nodes running in large production servers, how do you find logs in those things? And so we really wanted to build for that scale and that usability where uh, for Kubernetes, we'll automatically tag all your logs coming through. So you might get a single log line, but we'll tag it with all the metadata that you need to find exactly what you want. So if I want to, if my container dies, and I no longer know that container's around, how am I going to get the logs off of that? Well, you can go to LogDNA, find the container that you're looking for, and know exactly where that error is coming from as well. So you're basically storing all this data, making it really easy for the integration piece. Yep. Where does the IBM relationship fit in? How, what's, what's the partnership? What are you guys doing together? Yeah, I don't know if Dan wants uh, to. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so we're partnering with IBM. We're, we are uh, one of their major partners for logging, so if you go into the observability tab under IBM Cloud and click on logging, LogDNA is there, you can start up a LogDNA instance. What we've done is, uh, you know, IBM brought us a great opportunity where we could take our product and help benefit their own customers and also IBM themselves with a lot of the logging that we do. They saw that we had a very simplistic way of thinking about logs and it was really geared towards, when you think about IBM Cloud and the shift that they're moving towards, which is really developer focused, it was a really, really good match for us. It brought us uh, the visibility into the upmarket with larger customers and also yeah gives us the ability to yeah. kind of deploy globally across IBM Cloud as well. I mean, IBM's got a great channel on the sales side too, and you guys got a great relationship. We've seen that playbook before, yeah. where I think we've interviewed and all the other events with IBM. Startups can really, if, they're fit, if they fit in with IBM, it's just massive. But what's the reason? Why, why the partnership? Explain. Well, I mean, <laughs> first of all, we were looking for a 
a solution, a logging solution that fit really well with IKS, our Kubernetes service. And it's cloud native, high scale, large number of clusters. That's what our customers are building. That's what we want to use internally as well. I mean, we were looking for a very robust cloud native logging um, service that we could use ourselves. And that's when we ran across these guys, what, about a year ago? Yeah, I mean, I think we kind of first got introduced at last year's KubeCon. Yeah. And then we went to Container World and we just kept seeing each and other. And we just and kept on yeah. rolling with it. So what we've done with that integration, what's nice about the integration is it's directly in the catalog. So it's another service in the catalog. You go and select it and, and um, provision it very easily. But what's really cool about it is we wanted to have that integration directly with the Kubernetes service as well. So there's a tab on the integration tab on the Kubernetes, literally one button, two lines of code that you just have to execute, yep. bam. All your logs are now streaming for the entire cluster with all the indexing and everything. It just makes it a really nice, rich experience to capture your this logs. This is infrastructure as code. This is what the promise it was. Absolutely is. You know, very seamless integration. Right. And the back end just works. Yeah. yeah. So talk about the Kubernetes pieces. I think this is fascinating because we've been pontificating and evaluating all the commentary here in theCUBE. And we've, we've come to the conclusion that cloud's great but there's other new platform-like things emerging. You got Edge and all these things. So there's a whole new set, new things are going to come up, and it's not going to be just called cloud, it's going to be some, something else. There's like Edge, you got, you, know, you got cameras, you got data, you got all kinds of stuff going on. Yep. Kubernetes seems to fit a lot of these new emerging use cases. Where does the Kubernetes fit in? You said you built on Kubernetes. Yep. Just why is that so important? Explain that one piece. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, Kubernetes obviously brought a lot of opportunities for us uh, the, the big differentiator for us was because we were built on Kubernetes from the get-go, we made that decision a long time ago, we didn't realize we could actually deploy this package anywhere. It didn't have to be, we didn't have to just run as a multi-tenant SaaS product anymore, and I think yeah. part of that is for IBM, their customers are actually running, when, they, when they're talking about a, an integrated logging service, we're actually running on IBM Cloud, so their customers can be assured that the data doesn't actually move anywhere else. It's going to stay in IBM so, Cloud where this they is, feel This is really important, and, and because they're on the Kubernetes service, it gives them the opportunity, running on Kubernetes, running on a managed service, they're going to be able to put log DNA in each of the major regions. Right. So customers will be able to keep their log data in the regions that they want it to stay. Great for compliance. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, a compliance yep. dream, Especially right? Especially with the EU. It. Yeah. How yeah. about yeah. search and discovery? That's fit into just simple, and what's your strategy on that? Yeah, so our, our strategy is, if you look at a lot of the logging solutions out there today, a lot of times they require you to learn complex query languages <laughs> and things like that. And so the biggest thing we were hearing was like, man, onboarding is really hard because some of our developers don't look at logs on a daily basis. They look at it every two weeks. Jerry Chen from Greylock Ventures said, machine learning is the new, ML is the new SQL. Yep. <laughs> to your point, you don't, this complex querying is going to be automated away. Yep. Yes. And you guys agree with that. You, oh yeah, totally You talked about it on our interview. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, Norman, I wonder if you could bring us in a little bit of compliance and what discussions you're having with customers. Obviously yeah. GDPR, big discussion point we had. Uh, you know, we've got new laws coming from California soon. And yep. Uh, you know, so how important is this to your customers and what's the reality kind of out there in, in your user Yeah, you know, base? compliance was, you know, our, our founders had run uh, a lot of different businesses before. They had two major startups where they worked with eBay and they, they had the, compliance was the, the big thing. And so we made a decision early on to say, hey look, we're, we're about 50 people right now, let's just do compliance now. You know, I've been at startups where we go, let's just keep growing and growing and we'll worry about compliance later. Yeah, bite you in the ass, big time. Yes. You know, we, yeah, we made the decision to say, hey look, we're smaller, let's just implement all the processes yeah. and the necessary needs, so. Well, the needs there too, that's two yep. things, right? I mean, get it out early. Yep. It's like security, build it up front and exactly. you got it in. Yep, yeah. yep. And remember, um, earlier we were talking and I was telling you how within the Kubernetes service we like to use our own services to build expertise. It's the same thing here. Not, not only are they running on top of IKS, we're using log DNA to manage the logs and everything across the infrastructure for IKS as well. So we're heavily using it. You know, this also highlights, Daniel, the ecosystem dynamic of having, when you break down this monolithic uh, type environments and those sets of services, you benefit because you can tap into a startup, they can tap into IBM's goodness, it's a somewhat simple biz dev deal other than the <laughs> rev share component of the sales, but technically, this is what customers want at the end game, is they want the right tool, the right job, right product. Right. And if it comes from a startup, you guys don't have to build it. I mean, that, exactly, let the experts do it. We'll, we'll integrate it, it's a great relationship, and the teams work really well together, yep. which is What fantastic. are you guys doing with other startups? If a startup watches and says, hey, I want to be like LogDNA, I want to plug into the IBM cloud, I want to be just like them and make all that cash. <laughs> um, 
what do they got to do? What's the, what's, the, what's the model? I mean, we're, we're constantly <laughs> looking at startups and, and new, new business opportunities, obviously. We do this all the time, um, but it's got to be the right fit, right? That, and that's important. It's got to be the right fit with the technology. It's got to be a right fit as far as culture and team dynamics of, of not only my team, but the startups teams and how yeah. we're going to work together. And this is why it worked really great with yeah. Vlog DNA. I mean, everything. It just all fit, it all made sense, and it had a good business model behind that as well. So, yes, there's opportunities for others, but we have to go through and explore all those. Yeah. So, so, Norman, wonder if you could share, how's your experience been at, at the show here? We, you know, we love to hear, you know, so many startups here, uh, you yeah. know, record setting attendance uh, yep. for, for the show. What were your expectations coming in? Yeah. You know, what are the KPIs you're, you're, you're measuring with, and how's it, how's it met to what you thought you were going to get? No, it's great. I mean, we, uh, previous to the last year's KubeCon, we had not really done any events. We were a small company, we didn't want to spend the resources, in, but <laughs> we came in last year. And I think what was refreshing was people would talk to us and we're like, oh yeah, we're not an open source technology, we're actually a log vendor, and we can, and, and we'll, <laughs> but what we said was, hey, we'll provide you that end-to-end -end, end -end experience, and people were like, oh wow, this is actually pretty refreshing. I'm not configuring, configuring yeah. my FluentD system, FluentD to, to tap into another Elasticsearch. There, there was, you know, not a lot of that. I think this year our expectation was we knew the size doubled. We still wanted to get the message out there. We knew we were hot off the presses with the uh, IBM public launch of our, our service on IBM Cloud. And I think we were expecting a lot. I mean, we uh, more than doubled what our, our lead count was, and it was just, it's been an amazing conference. I mean, I think the energy that you get and the, the quality of folks that come by, it's like, yeah, everybody's running Kubernetes, they know what they're talking about, and it makes that conversation that much easier for us as well. Now you're Cube alumni too, it's the boot, look at that. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> well guys, thanks for coming on, sharing the insight. Again, great to see you again, yeah, great absolutely. commentary again, having the distinguished engineering and these kinds of conversations really helps yeah. the community figure out kind of what's out there, so I appreciate that. Yeah. And if everything's going to be on Kubernetes too, we should put the cube on Kubernetes. <laughs> these videos, we'll be on them, we'll be out there. Yeah. Hey, yeah, absolutely, that'd be great. Covers. Day three, breaking it down here. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. That's a wrap for us here in Seattle. Thanks for watching and look for us next year, 2019. That's a wrap for 2018. Stu, good job. Thanks for coming on, guys. Really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. See you around. <laughs>